Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few cards, eight cards that have gone up in price or that you should recognize they are not bulk cards anymore and they are quite valuable. We will start with a card from Innistrad. This card was not valuable for the longest time, but any doubling effects typically do very well. Now there is a doubling effect in standard currently and the new Amaket set and I wanted to take you through the parallel lives and how its price goes up and down. Now the European version is only $4 so it hasn't had the steady growth that we have had in the US and one in another video I will explore is there the opportunity for arbitrage. If you live in Europe could you sell these to the Americans in a large chunk and vice versa. So Parallel Lives, one of the better cards in Innistrad. When I was playing Innistrad, this card was considered bulk. Not like bulk in the sense is 25 cents, but in the sense that it is a bulk $1 rare. It has since that time just steadily, steadily gone up and its trade value is extremely liquid. So if a effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, put twice as many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. Very good. I at the time was like, hmm, doubling season is just better, right? For one more mana, it's just better, but it depends on the deck. Maybe you don't, maybe your deck only cares about tokens. It doesn't care about all the counters on it. Although doubling season only gets better with time and that card has been very, very expensive as well. Hopefully we get another reprint soon. Next, we will talk about a card in standard, Bantu. This card has gone up slightly, although it has it as well as the other gods saw no play in the top eight and have a poor showing in Pro Tour Amaket. This one, at the very least, you can kind of look at it as if you're playing mono black zombies anyway, this might be a additional fit. It is a 4-6 with Menace, so very difficult. It has evasion. It's very difficult to kill. Uh, and it's relatively easy to turn on its effect in a zombie deck. So a creature needs to die under your control this turn. Well, you can also sacrifice a creature. And those zombies sometimes need to be sacrificed to have a greater effect. So Bantu is not surprising to me when it goes up in price due to the colors are correct. And sometimes being in the correct colors is enough. It sounds kind of strange, but that's what it's true about every fetch land. That's what's true about every, the most expensive lands and most expensive cards previous to the Sahili or the guardian ban was in the blue red. Blue red lands were extremely expensive. Now they've gotten cheaper and it will continue to get cheaper unless they see play in a tier one deck again. So Bantu is in their correct colors. He's not like super great, but people will try to play him in the mono black zombie decks and he seems like a good fit. The other big deck that came out was A for Work Marvel. A for Work Marvel, I looked at the data, it had an incredibly strong showing, day two showing. So though it didn't win the Pro Tour, half the decks were A for Work Marvel and in the top eight. And in the second day two, it did extremely well. Chandra Flamecaller is one of the cards that sees play there. As I've always said, if a Planeswalker is below $5, it is worth looking at. Mainly because they, depending on the meta, so if you are an A for Work Marvel, this is a fantastic finisher for you. But if you're not, it's not very good. So it only fits one deck, but that deck that it fits, I believe, is tier one. Now, once Battle for Zendikar and rotates out and that block rotates, you may not have as many good targets anymore for the Marvel. Maybe Nicol Bolas becomes a very good target, but we will see. So Chandra is worth looking at. She's very cheap 
the one thing I have to say is she rotates out in 90 days. Rotation is happening. Uh, for a lot, a lot of you, you may not remember the last rotation, but when rotation happens, no one wants your standard, no one wants your cards that just rotated out. Not even for pennies on a dollar, because at that point, people are buying the new cards, they want to stock. It's all about cash flow, right? You can't be stuck holding on to cards of no liquidness, uh, meaning you cannot move them. That is the worst case scenario. And that's why a lot of these speculations are EDH now, because EDH always has appeal. You don't need to ro worry about rotation. So let's talk about this one Commander 2013, The Vault. This, I believe, is also an Ice Age, is uncommon, if I'm correct. It is a $2 card now. I'm pretty sure this is the a new artwork because I remember the other one and the other one is the creepier than this. It's good anytime you have, there are just some cards or some mechanics and magic that are good. Mechanics that allow you to draw and look at the top five cards of your library will always be good. So you can pay as many times as you choose. You can pay one life, put those cards on the bottom of your library in any order, and then look at the next top five cards from your library. Then shuffle your library and put the last cards you looked at that way in the top of any order. It's very interesting and a blue splash for Death Shadow, right? Death Shadow is worried about a Death Shadow version in ED8 where it's let's do damage to yourself is very, very good. And I'm actually playing a version of that where it is suicide. And I might splash the blue because blue gives me options for tutoring as well as the laboratory maniac, which is a great combo win from nowhere. So that's why I believe it's going up in price. Obviously, it cannot be played in Death Shadow Modern. But overall, it's a very good EDH card for that strategy. Plus, it's just a tutor. Next, Enchantress Presence. It's about time this card went up. It's been a long time since I've seen the... It's been a steady, steady and slow growth to 5. But then the spike to 10. It's a unique card, but it's not the best card. So the best card in Legacy is the one in uh, green and does pretty much the same thing except it's a creature that cannot be the target of spells or abilities. The reason it's a better in my opinion is the fact that it's cheaper by one. Now this is an enchantment so it will trigger that card actually. So it's a nice two into three drop where you play the uh, that creature and then you play this you draw a card and the next enchantment you play you draw two cards which is very very good so some cards like this just have a lot of staying value and you just have to keep holding so if you look at this chart it doesn't look like much hope from 2013 to 2017 it's just incrementally gone up but now it's spiked and that is one of the things you look at is unique cards that fit into niche decks. Once that niche deck becomes a little stronger or more people want to buy it, it goes up. Talking about cards that are unique, if you have old cards at all, I have seen a trend where anything old, Antiqu Antiquities, um, Legends, Arabian Nights, Alpha Beta obviously even Unlimited, they are becoming collector's items. And now the fact is a collector's item does not have to be good. It just has to be old and there has to be not many of them. So even cards not on the reserve list, cards that have been reprinted a million times, which this card has been, is worth $2 to $3. And I've seen this trend and if you've been following these videos, you've been seeing that trend as well. So if you are fortunate enough to own older cards, be very careful not to bulk them out. Uh, bulking them out, actually it was a time where I used to uh, do a legacy box and I gave away a lot of uh, legacy cards, or not legacy box, but like um, vintage box, I guess it was called. And all those cards have spiked like crazy. And luckily I held on to some of them, 
but I made the mistake. The mistake was not giving them away because that's fine to just subscribers. The mistake was I could have purchased way more, like way more of this older stuff, but at the time it wasn't valuable. So anyway, the next two cards I want to talk about are in Commander 2016. As I have mentioned, the set is now out of print. And it is time to see random spikes and prices that don't make sense. And this is one of them. It is now $13 in the US and still $2 in Europe. So if you live in Europe and you can buy version, if you can buy this for $2 or less, and you can ship it for 13. I don't know what post it is, but I imagine if you bought like 100 copies of this for 200, and then you sold it for, let's say you can sell it for like $8. I think that's reasonable. Uh, $8 and you sold it for 800. I don't know why that doesn't happen. Um, arbitrage, right? Because I ship stuff to a lot of different countries. Um, and it doesn't really cost that much to ship if you ship in mass quantities. Uh, and a lot of places don't have tracking anyway, so it's not like you have that. Even if you wanted tracking, they want to give it to you. So at the end of the day, it might be some opportunities here, for especially if Commander is less popular in those areas. The same can be said about this card, which is $4. Um, in Europe, it's $0.62. Cents. It is a Commander 2016. We will see a lot of price movement initially. I don't believe it's going to hold when Commander 2017 comes out. If Commander 2017 supplements 2016 decks. So I will wait um, for that time, which is August. Uh, the All the new Commander decks are coming out August. And we will see if the Commander 2017 decks will want people to make new decks or will supplement these unique strategies. Because these 2016 decks are four color, it is likely that there's something of value to in, to, in the 2017 decks. Anyway, that's it, guys. Let me know if I missed any cards. Bye, guys.